Hello and welcome to this week's security management course. I'm Professor Wool. Today we're going to be talking about best practices in designing network security zones. So let's review a very simple example. Suppose you have a network connection where you have your internet, you have an internal network, and you have a web application that has a, a web front, an application zone, and a data zone. And you put in a firewall. The simplest way to design such a network is to have a single firewall that's connected the way I show here. Well, this is a very basic design. It has two serious problems. The first is that these three zones, the web zone, the application zone, the data zone, are not segregated from each other. Traffic between them is completely unfiltered. It doesn't go through the firewall, so that's not good. And also, this firewall is, from a security point of view, a single point of failure. So if you misconfigure that firewall in any way, your network potentially becomes wide open. And research does show that 95% of firewall breaches are really caused by misconfiguration of a firewall. So getting that right is, is crucial. So what can you do to improve? The next step up is to eliminate this simple network structure and connect each one of these zones directly to the firewall, to a separate interface on the firewall. Once you do that, traffic traveling between these separate zones has to go through the firewall. And now you can write policy on the firewall that controls and filters the traffic between these two, the three zones and also between these zones and other parts of your network from the outside to the inside, etc. So this is more secure. The challenge here now becomes a physical challenge. Each one of these connections takes up a physical port on the firewall. And there's a limited number of physical ports that you can have on the firewall depending on the model. So this is a limiting factor and uh, the next step up is that technology lets us avoid these physical connections using virtualization of the network, using VLANs. Instead of having a physical connection and use a physical interface in each of these um, uh, connections from the zone to the firewall, you can virtualize all of them and have three separate VLANs and the VLANs are all connected to virtual interfaces on the firewall running over a single high-speed physical port. And you can have a very large number of VLANs, you have much more flexibility, uh, and still maintain the same filtering capability and the same granularity of uh, access control policies that you can instrument on the firewall, because crossing between VLANs does require a firewall policy rule to allow the traffic through. Okay, so that's good. The challenge now becomes that it, it's, it's become quite easy to define VLANs and sometimes people over virtualize their network and you end up with thousands of VLANs. And if you do that, potentially you end up with a firewall that schematically would look like this. It would look like a spider. It might have hundreds or even thousands of VLANs hanging off of that one firewall. And if you do that, managing that firewall becomes quite difficult because remember, if you have n different interfaces, virtual interfaces on the firewall, then you have n squared paths going through the firewall, going from one interface to another. So you have n squared of these paths and you have to manage the policies of all those n squared paths. And then the policy on this firewall becomes really complex and difficult to understand and to manage. So what could you do? To improve even further, well, now you can introduce individual per zone firewalls, like so. And by doing this, now you have dedicated firewalls in front of each of your security zones. And that makes management a lot simpler because each of these firewalls is very focused. This firewall in the middle is just protecting the application zone. So 
the rules on it only have to deal with that application zone on the one side um, and the policy on that firewall becomes much more compact and much more focused and easy to understand. Except that now you look at this picture and you realize that I've introduced a lot more devices and now I have to worry about physical boxes and I have to worry about power supply and cooling and um, and rack space and etc. And this is also something that we wish to avoid. So the, the final piece of the puzzle is that we can use another type of virtualization which is firewall virtualization most or all major firewall vendors let you purchase one large box and have multiple separate instances of virtual firewalls running inside that box each of those individual firewalls has its own policy, it's connected to its own VLANs and it does exactly what I described before, it's protecting just the zone behind it. Nevertheless, they all reside inside a single physical box, so you get the best of all worlds, you have all the granularity in filtering capabilities and you minimize the number of hardware boxes that you need to worry about. Thank you for your attention.